Uh, this is the oil chart. It's actually for the year of 20, going back all the way to 2011 daily chart. And well, first off, I want to point out about you know a lot of people that talk about that word. They use the word the elite. You know, I personally <laughs> don't like that word too much because uh, there is no consensus among people on a top. There's a lot of power struggles. You know when. Lindsey Williams says some things like I'm saying, yeah, no kidding, they're fighting amongst each other. How about that? Is that news? No, that's not news. That's human nature. Uh, but I just want to point out something now. Stupid things can be sometimes with policy. Well, for instance, we know that they're doing the embargo with Iran. They're going to stop, well, Iran preemptively stop shipping oil to UK and France for one so the oil prices have spiked in the West but what's going on to the customers of Iranian oil China Japan South Korea and India they're getting it at a steep discount so while the West is having their economy screwed up by these uh, higher oil prices in other words it's going to be slowed down by the higher oil prices people are dealing with Iran are enjoying a windfall which is going to help their economy now I don't know if this would be a hundred percent correlation but you figure China's economy is going to be helped by this so they're going to have more money to invest and the one place they're probably going to help more than anything or if they invest their money it's going to be in the EU the European Union it could turn out that way there's many 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 factors going on at one time so you really don't know you know you can't draw one conclusion from one little thing but it's this actually this Iranian oil embargo is going to help out Japan China South Korea and India it's going to hurt the West so obviously the solution is going to be go to war and not saying that's the moral solution I'm telling you that is going to be the solution and I've already pointed out an article from Foreign Affairs the flagship publication Council on Foreign Relations that you know they're calling for a time for war with Iran they openly stated now I don't like Alex Jones okay and I don't like Bob Chabon I'm gonna state this flat out and I'm not saying it's because I don't like him I don't trust him in all the way so I got about I'm gonna put out some of my points on this thing and they're probably gonna be the I think they're gonna be the correct points but it's not I'm not doing this for a political debate I'm doing this to make money and I actually probably shouldn't put it out but if there's not too many people listening to it I don't care um, this is uh, the oil sitting right now at a little over 105 and I want to point out something back here back here on March 7th they had everything heating up over in Libya right well what happened you know there was here was the explosive move in oil look at this kind of moves it was down here to 84 exploded to 97 exploded upward again exploded upward again well it pulled back to 96 okay that's why this is actually kind of a it could go up I don't know I don't know actually let me put it to this way 100 percent honest if I knew which way the direction of oil was going I'd be putting money on it right now I don't have any money in oil because I don't know which way it's going but historically that has been a pretty hard resistance point the 104 105 area um, it could pull back it could that's all I got to say and uh, I think they're going to try to find a way to bring the prices down because it's probably is an attack upon the Western economies by Iran so if they can figure out a way to, to pull the prices down they're going to because a lot of this is the demands not there it's actually psychological like in other words if they brought it down to 100 again or something like around 100 they, I think it's not gonna, it's not gonna be like a, you know, go to a gas station in Europe or something. They're not gonna have petrol to pump. They will, they will, 
because Libya is coming on again too and you know who controls that Italy and the UK and France so actually Italy's in there big time too that's not well known but it's true um, I want to go on to something about this is actually an old chart but it goes on with principles and this is one reason you're going to see gold fly oil fly and silver is going to really take off like a rocket but I also want to caution again when I say will silver is going to take off like a rocket it's going to crash like like a like a lump of stone you know it's going to crash like that too same deal just you know it's going to happen they're going to raise margins you're going to say it's a conspiracy to raise margins and stuff well I'm not looking at that I'm looking at I want to sell at the right point and buy back at the right point I'm not looking at all this other types of stuff about the whole everything falling apart and all that type of stuff for now for now long term I think the financial situation could get out of hand and it is smart to always hold back on some physical silver no matter what you do it would always be good to hold physical silver at least a portion there's no doubt about that this chart um, was the gold prices and actually it's kind of a yearly chart but you're looking back when they had the uh, Iranian hostage crisis back in 79 that's when gold really took off uh, the Iraq Iran war and finally had the ceasefire gold was way up there Kuwait 911 start taking off again anytime is uncertainty the Iraq war Iran I don't know if it's gonna be a war in Iran I don't know I think there is gonna be very soon but anytime there's tensions in the Middle East Global uncertainty, people actually run to gold, simple fact. And right now, that is one reason gold is going to keep going up. I don't, I don't buy into the theory that gold is going to go down because there's going to be not only tensions in the Middle East, there's going to be um, debt defaults uh, throughout of maybe other nations, or there's going to be more downgrades of debt. So people are going to turn more and more to gold, plus they're still... Uh, there's many indications all across the board in every nation on the earth that they're going to be putting out more and more increases in their money supply, in their fiat money supply. So gold is going to go up. There's no doubt about it. It's not going to be where silver um, goes up and gold stays flat. That's not going to be the case. But silver is going to go up a lot harder. Now this chart was talking about the oil price history again massive increases in oil prices and when there was uh, the tensions with Iran back in 1979-1980 the um, Iraqi Iranian war for years it was very high um, same thing you know with 911 Iraq Iraq war prices went up and also if you look back Yom Kippur the 1973 war very very big spike in oil prices now obviously the people who produce oil in this country domestically do have an interest in having oil prices high but just like anything there's a limit there's a limit just like you know I'm gonna say the reality is you know in any any commodity there is if you know people talk about silver going to a thousand dollars an ounce fundamentally on real dollars it's not going to be that way because um, demand will plummet they'll find ways around not using this stuff even if it's not as good it's just not going to be worth it to use this stuff at that price so um, with uh, the case of uh, same with oil if oil was like two hundred dollars a barrel people would be riding bicycles all over the place they'd be riding mopeds and they wouldn't be using this stuff and actually in um, many countries outside the United States it is you know eight dollars a gallon or whatever the heck it is around there so uh, people just use smaller cars much more fuel efficient cars so the demand will drop and they don't drive as much you know actually for, um, so I mean you know some of these things are unrealistic and I what I say is gonna happen though is that there's gonna be bubble prices and um, you know there's a lot of pundits that are going to be cheerleading this stuff on 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 and then it's going to crash I tend to pick the tops and get in on the lows I think fundamentally silver is something good to hold physical silver for a long haul because 
there is going to be some more economic calamities coming down and uh, Bernanke might lose control of the situation. I don't think he's intended on causing extreme hard hyperinflation, but we're in competition with uh, the European Union, Russia, and China, and any one of those centers wants to be the top dog in the world, and the way to do that is to knock down the other guy, and they will try to knock down the United States, and if they cause hyperinflation, so be it. That's what they'll do. So it is a possibility, and I don't think Bernanke's behind that doing that, but he'll be blamed for it. I know it. Um, this was something else that's pretty interesting. This is the uh, gold oil ratio. Right now it says it's sitting around 17. But sometimes, you know, you really, fundamentally, this is something like if you to look at for more of a long haul, what's going to happen. Because sometimes it takes a hell of a long time for things to change. Like, for instance, if you looked in August of 2011, the... Um, Gold bought a lot of barrels of oil because oil actually touched down about $75 a barrel and gold was around uh, $1,900. So it was the gold ratio, it was much more in favor of gold back then and it made it look like oil was the best investment. And actually, short term, if you bought oil at $75, and I did buy some because that actually that helped me, that made me buy break even uh, and see it rise up. You would uh, you would have been in actually in a good shape. So sometimes this is also good to look at, but it's not the only tool to use. Uh, but it is something to good to look at. Tells you when gold is overpriced in relation to oil, and, and oil is overpriced in relation to gold. It is something very good to look at. The correlation between oil and gold is not that shabby at all. They seem to really, you know, one gets ahead of the other too much. It seems to. Uh, uh, you know, the one will catch up with the other or the other one will fall. One one way or the other, it kind of evens it out again. And a lot of that goes back to because of tensions in the Middle East. Because these political events drive both oil and gold. And we're seeing this coming up right now. So the reality of the situation is that, you know, expect gold and oil to move up greatly and silver will have to move up tremendously. The real curveball coming up is they lowered margins. So, when will the next red margin rate hike come? I don't know. I imagine it might be forty something dollars an ounce. I don't know, forty eight, forty five. I would think somewhere in that, where they pretty much did it the last time. In other words, silver was up over forty. They raised the margins. Um, you know, you would actually have to look at gold. If um, you know, if there's a lot of fast gains. They'll raise margins. I don't see nothing coming up real soon, obviously, because they just lowered them. But, you know, if you jump in the market too late, you know, you can get caught in that margin trap, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is a chart on palladium. And this is the chart for basically 2010. And we had a very good year in 2010 on palladium because I have this stuff and I like it. But... I want to point out about this primary manufacturing index, and if you look uh, where palladium really started taking off, where I would feel safe where palladium is going to start taking off is as long as this index is going up, because this is basically where we had all the gains, most of the gains, from around September all the way up to the beginning of the year, 228 11, uh, February 28th, 11. Now, if you look in this was around the end of August, right around here. That was about the lowest, the lower areas for the year. And here it is going into the end of February 2011. See, actually, palladium was going up faster than silver during this period of time. But I think palladium, because there is really no news that I know of that I can look at that isn't, well, I know there's a lot of fundamental news out there. There's a lot of news about, um, you know, how much palladium is being used on cars this year. But th this market is basically, it is rigged. <laughs> I think it's worse than uh silver market, to tell you the truth. Because it's a very small market and a lot of it is controlled by the Russians. 
So, you know, they'll have such Russian come out there and say this story and that story, and then it, they'll dump on the market when they say there was a shortage and all this kind of garbage. They'll, they play all kinds of games with this market. But I think the only thing I would really go by with this market is this. This. And, you know, you notice Palladium was rising from here. Primary Manufacturers Index, the uh, that's the Global Manufacturing Index, is going up. Well, that's about when you're going to see Palladium rise. That's probably a D. And, you know, if you look from, from back here, this is when we had the crash of 2008. This is the beginning of 2009. You can see it was really moving up. Well, that has a lot to do with because it's automotive production. It's automotive production. But I would not necessarily look strictly at automotive production because we saw a very big year in 2011, yet the prices decreased. But what happened with the global manufacturing index? It decreased. It's like you really can't go by just the, auto, the automotive production. So I'm going to use this more as a tool of palladium. Now, what I might do, and I think I was a little scared to do this, but I should have done it because it had a good jump, is if I see a pullback during one day on a daily basis, I'm probably going to go in there and uh, buy double leverage on any kind of pullback and dump it on any kind of gain. Not, and I have a core holding in it electronically. I also have a physical palladium. I know there's a lot, a lot of people playing around with palladium, and I don't really call it playing. I'm talking about winning. And I'm thinking fundamentally, this metal is going to be worth more than gold. Plus, the confiscation isn't going to be there because it never really was monetized. So that's why I say it's a no-brainer, a hell of a lot better than gold. Everybody's telling you to hold gold, hold palladium. I mean, yeah, it's not recognized as money, but fundamentally, this stuff should be worth more than platinum, and platinum should be worth more than gold. Plus, it's never been monetized, so I don't see how they can confiscate it. It's just an industrial metal. And uh, But the way to trade in and out might be to look at this uh, global PMI. Now, as far as silver goes, um, you know, quite obviously, this is one of those uh, fib points where it, it's been sitting in here pretty flat. And um, I know it went up today, but I personally think... I hate saying this because it's like almost like being a cheerleader, but I think it's going to go up to about 35 or so, or probably clear 35. And on a triple leverage, if it does that, I'm probably going to dump it. I'm probably going to dump the triple leverage, and I'll keep the PSLV. And uh, I might be dumping it too soon because uh, this thing had two hard gains up here. But say, for instance, I dumped it and it went a little lower, I'll buy it back. That's what I'll do. But I'm not intending on just holding triple leverage because uh, that fund, um, it's worse than AGQ as far as eroding. And if you start catching a lot of volatility and the price is staying flat, it'll erode pretty quick. So I'm going to probably get the hell out of it pretty fast, provided I get a gain. But I think I will. I think I will because I, my bet is that it's going to go up. Um, as far as right now, um, yeah, again, Palladium was at a good gain. It was actually at a loss Friday. Now, obviously, today's not a trading day because it's President's Day. But uh, tomorrow, I would expect Palladium possibly to be up still. Now, um, you know, in the future, like I said, I'm thinking right now this Palladium market is probably pretty safe to jump into for double leverage. But I'm only going to jump into it on uh, pullbacks. And as soon as I get a gain, it's out of there. It's out of there. And I still have uh, the other ETF on it and the physical, so I'm going to be playing it like that. And I'm going to be doing the silver the same way with the triple leverage. So, I mean, there's basically three tiers that I'm using. You know, physical as the main tier, um, some core holdings and electronic, and I'm also going to be going and double or triple leverage on pullbacks. But only when I think it's safe to do so. Right now, I don't feel too good about the oil market going up even more because of what happened back here. And I could be wrong. This thing can fly all the way up to 115. It may. It may. I don't know. But I also think if oil flies up, gold's going to fly up, and that's going to push silver up higher, too. So it's uh, 
you know it's my it might not matter they're probably all going to run together the real trick is going to become about is when oil comes up to say hundred fifty dollars a barrel or more that is not going to be a point where it's going to stay there very long I think it's going to crash crash everything pretty hard and uh, but I think it's going to take a while to get up there or if it goes up there it might spike and come down like 20 30 bucks I think there's going to be some really wild moves in this oil market this year and um, it's going to be pretty tough to catch them that's going to, that's going to be without a doubt so I don't really see any super super hard movements in oil coming up until the attack I ran and that is like the uh, 60 million dollar question as they say um, I'd like to know when that would be but if I knew I definitely would not be saying on YouTube that's a matter of fact so uh, you know I mean I'm putting out common sense information I don't have any inside information but usually the way I think um, is uh, fairly good so uh, and I'm going to tell you but it's an ultimate recommendation do always hold at least a good portion of physical silver because unintentionally Bernanke could screw up I don't think the guy is so bad unintentionally he could screw up it is common sense that say for instance China or Russia or European Union you know nobody's like our enemy per se but let's put it this way they all want to be on the top and the way they do that is to kick the other guy down if they can find a way to cause hyperinflation in the United States they would love it and there's all kinds of it, there's all kinds of games going on behind the scenes so you know despite what anybody is even intending to do by the so-called elite in our country in the Federal Reserve they could they could lose they can lose and if they lose you want to be holding physical silver and I think they might lose you know they might screw up they might screw up so long term don't always don't sell all physical silver don't ever do that until this all plays out or if you do it do the nickels like I said but I don't know how long it's longer those stupid nickels gonna be available uh, because you know our government isn't stupid it just sure as hell is not enough nickels around in this in the economy that people can go buy them up there's no doubt about that so that's gonna be like uh, you know for the few people